This is a free download from the BBC. For more information, go to bbc.co.uk slash podcasts. Hello, welcome, well done, podcast, now yours. Thanks. Register of Who's Here, Dealey. Hello, boss. Give us a summary of your week in five words. Uh, uh, good, sexy, bants, sunshine, tan. Bets. Present. Uh, and let's tell me the highlight of your week in one word. Right now. One word. Now. Scoins. Here. Uh, and if you had to describe your week uh, via a smell, what would that smell be? Well, it's Ian. Uh, it's very interesting you say that. I think the smell that I would probably most describe myself... Um, or, uh, not myself, I suppose, as, oh, as the week in itself. Have just, uh, just, just say it. Just, just say a smell. Just say it. Um, there may be sort of peppermint. The peppermint doesn't smell of anything. It tastes of peppermint. It smells of mint. Um, and bo- no, sh- no, uh, cut that bit out. Um, let's crack on! Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Do, 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 podcast! People call me on my show about all sorts. Sometimes to tell us a story, sometimes to get sexy with me, sometimes to agree with me, other times to get sexy with me. But most of the time it's to get sexy with me, but sometimes it's to moan about something. It's freestyling a bit. That's good. Freestyle. That's good. I enjoyed that. You like that, guys? Yeah, yeah, that was good. I, yeah. I enjoyed that. Really great that. feedback. Great, great <laughs> comps. Yes, Goins is laughing. <laughs> Justin's laughing. Kelly's not yeah. laughing so much. I'm having fun, though. Yeah. yeah. Got a yeah. smile on my face. She's got a smile on her face. You've got both hands in your pants. pockets as well. Yes. I don't stand here trying to focus the blame, but I'm hurting deep Well, it's not um, very often we do this, but we have to uh, interrupt Rod Stewart, and it's over there for some breaking news. Uh, Ian's just called in. Good morning, Ian. Hello, Ian. What would you? What's the breaking news, Ian? This music is absolute guff, and I'm going to heart. Whoa, 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 Ian! Whoa, whoa. hang on a second, hang on, whoa, dude! Hold up! No, 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 no! If you go to heart, they play this song, and it'll be followed by uh, Robbie Williams and Candy. That's how bad heart is. You need to redeem yourself. What's your next tune? Uh, right, I'm going to stop this song. It stopped. It's okay. Don't worry. We, we we were debating whether we should stop that song. I don't know how it slipped through the filter. Um, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, 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 hang on. Um, right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, okay, ah, aha. Here we go. How about this? Is that better? Happy it's the Who and Happy Jack. Is that better? No, 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 no. no. Oh. We need something a bit more modern. Oh, flipping oh, heck. Uh, um, some Gabba? <laughs> what? Um, what You're do you want? 30 wa- seconds or I'm off to Nicky Campbell or Hart. Whoa, 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 dude! He's throwing no, that corner. Dude, um, dude, no, hang on, we can do this. Stay there, 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 stay there. Um, I got it, 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 I got it. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. How about this? Yeah, that was good. UB40 and Chrissy Hines? Absolutely, I do. Thank you very much. No, Ian, before you go, you just failed the test. You're banned from listening to this show. Right. I hope you enjoy Heart. What the hell was that about? I mean, you know, we're not the biggest fans of Stuart, but anyone who picks UB40... Pick this. He picked that. It's so bland. He said he wanted something a bit more modern. (laughs) And by that, he meant some white reggae from 1984. No, no, sorry, Ian. No, you, 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 you go, mate. You go wherever you want to go. Not welcome here. Not welcome here. Kelly, if he turns up again, mm-hmm. could you politely show him the door? Sure. Thank you. No, not welcome here. Off. Hope you enjoy Hart or Nicky Campbell. No, I'm not having that. No. Not having that. I don't, yeah. I don't, that, and that goes for everyone. Not having that. From one caller moaning to another, here it is. I'm, I'm reading this. A moan from another moaning moaner. Good morning, my dear. Hands-free, car-free, phone-free, GMT-free, gluten-free, parked up. 
There you are. Content How free, are talent free, interest free. No, we're talking about me, not you. Richard, <laughs> we've given you no, a third... Listen, it's a I'm third... A th- cons- hang on, shut oh, up. God. Shut up. It's a shut third... Shut up yourself. You shut up yourself. It's a... Th- no. You, no, you shut up. Zip it. Zip hey, it, Button it, old man. Now, it's... Th- <laughs> At least I got there. Yeah, you might, you, might not, you might not see, see another day, mate. Anyway, can yes. I tell you why I rang? Let me set this up. This is the third, Go on, this is the third attempt at your phone call, Richard. Aren't you lucky? No. So, it better be good, otherwise you're going to get a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'll get a Kirby kiss. And you're going to get, get a bunch of fives. You're going to Kirby kiss me, lovely. Yeah, you're going to get, get... I'm going to hit you. Well, I'll get my mum on. <laughs> yeah, my dad's better than yours. My dad's got tiger in the loft. Right, oh, has he? <laughs> Do you know, so when I was a boy of about seven or eight, we were down the street, various kids were saying what they had. And one kid said, well, my dad's got a tiger in the loft. Oh, blimey, really? <laughs> I think it was you. Anyway, um, listen, the reason I'm phoning up on a serious matter... Um, I don't know what's happened to the show. You seem to have lost your edge. Ever since you had that row with old Mohammed and you threw your toys out of the pram. Hang on a minute. Hang I think minute. it was the same... Hang on. It was the same day Same day you had a row with another woman, which was a good old humdinger. I think was the that Sharon you're talking about? Was, was, that, really? was, that Sha- was that Sharon who I had a row with? Because her son was a copper? Uh, it could have been. Could yeah, have been. you weren't really paying attention, were you, you plum? No, but I just look, plum yourself. I just like, you know, we 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 listen to you instead of LBC because we like a bit of old Alja Father going on. I don't know. Well, you any seem to have you... lost your edge. What do you mean? Have you long... lost your your edge? Now we've dear. got. Listen, well, well, I've got no reason to get angry. We've had two councillors on in the last week that have come on and, and uh, said they'll do something yeah, about stuff. Not no, not councillors. It's, Counts a fair game. It's the punters when. Oh, oh. well, maybe <laughs> Richard. Maybe Richard. It's the punters, i.e., you, that haven't been delivering the goods because you've all kind of wimped out like the bunch of girls that you are, Chard. Well, I phoned you up. Yeah, and Three you've got me. You, you phoned up with the most boring, tedious, Not rubbish calls I've ever. Well, you just phoned Not up to say, hang on a second, down I, down Richard. Down. No, hang on a second. You, you've you just, just phoned up to say I've lost my edge, and then you? when I give you the edge, you, you can't handle it. Martin tablet. You can't handle the edge. Good for you. You you can't handle the edge, Richard. I can handle the truth. You can't handle it. You can't handle the truth, Richard. You can't. The Richard is your. The Richard is the truth that you're a dull call. With me. Thank you. That's the calibre of callers we get on this show. Hey, but sometimes we get highbrow calibre callers. Here's a highbrow calibre caller now. I, I live now about six miles away from the home on the Britwell Estate in Slough, ah, where I grew up and I moved out at the age of 11 years old and I drove, I drove past it. I walked, I, I parked up the end of the street and, and uh, had a little walk around. Man alive, it's tiny. Um, and uh, I had a little look. I could see into the back garden. If I stood in a weird place and stood on tippy-toe, I could see a few houses down and see in the back garden. Is it acceptable? And I'm, I'm genuinely tempted to do this. I, I nearly put a note through the door. There was a, a van parked outside one evening that had a phone number on it, and I took the phone number, and I didn't call it. Would it be acceptable for me and my sister to turn up one day, knock on the door, say, hello, we used to live here, here's a picture of us from the 70s, can we come in and have a look around? Would you let... If someone did that to you, would you let them in? My house is... um, that I'm in now is probably only about 30 years old, so uh, someone could knock on the door, I suppose. Colin? Good morning. Yes, if someone knocked on your door, right? Yeah. Hello. And said, I used to live in this house, can I come and have a look around? Would you let them in? I probably would. Yeah, I, th- I because think I it's probably would. Quite sweet, isn't it? It yeah. is quite. But supposing they're, I don't know, a murderer, a rapist, or burglar. Well, an M and R or a B, they could be, couldn't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but oh, I don't know. It's one of those things, isn't it? So, but uh, would, would it depend on what they look like? Supposing it was a sweet. Probably y- not. Really? So it's a sweet young woman. In her 50s, she's only five foot four, she's wee. And she knocks on the door, oh, excuse me, I used to live in this house, could I come and have a look, please, a wee little look? Yeah, I think I probably would. Yeah, she's got a Scottish accent, mate. So? So, when was she living in your house? And when was your house in Scotland, Colin? You're not asking the obvious questions, mate. Oh. Boom, she good. M's, she R's or she B's you, immediately. All right. It's a big fella comes in. Big fella. 
about six foot three. He's uh, he's topless. He's got tattoos on. All right, all right, mate. I used to live here. Oh, I'll well, come have a look around. Well, I suppose you. W- would you let him in? <sighs> oh, I don't know. Would you Probably. let him in? He stood at your doorstep. Would you let him in? Probably. That's the correct answer. Yeah, you should let him in. He sounds like a nice fella. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Why I've rung you? Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, that. By the way, oh uh, eight four five nine four double five five double five. And I can't believe more people don't do this. I can't believe more people don't do this. It's terrible, isn't it? The, what? Not ringing. No, 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 not ringing in. Oh, for goodness sakes. No, not the ringing in thing. I'm talking about more people don't knock on their old... Why, oh, sorry. Why do we not get knocks on our doors at least four times a year from people who claim to have lived in our house when they were younger? Well, I don't know. Maybe people aren't that interested. Oh, come on, man. Everyone's interested in nostalgia. The whole world is fueled no, by the thing. Not, not so much nowadays. Think of <laughs> generation, Hang yes. on. Nostalgia... We're not, we're not, people aren't interested so much in nostalgia these days. Mm. There's a sentence, Colin. One day you'll understand how beautifully constructed that is. Oscar Wilde himself would be all proud. All right, all right, all right. What you got for us? Right, an oppo. Yes. Definition is short for an operative. Uh, do you think? Pardon? Do you think? I think... Yes. And how do you know that? Because I've heard it before. Um... Many times. Mm... And now I haven't Googled it. I'm, I'm, I'm Googling it. I know you are. Yeah. <clears throat> I can hear you furiously typing away on your... Uh, computer. computer. Like on my computer keyboard, yes. Mm. Um... Colleague or friend is, is the closest we've got, yes. So it's not... I was worried that it was a little bit racist. You're saying it's not? No. Oh, man, I used to live in your house. Can't come round. Don't worry about the knife I got. Don't worry about the knife. Can I come and look at your house I used to live in? Uh, I've got another little one for you. Let me come look in your house. I've got a knife. Would you let that person in? Yes. You're nuts. It's weird that we have this culture, though, of, of wanting to buy houses in this country. It, it, it's, um, we, I, I, want, I want to own a property. Why? It's the old Englishman is its castle kind of thing, isn't it? Englishman is its castle. His castle? It's castle. An Englishman is his castle. An Englishman has a castle. Every Englishman should have a castle that they can call home, sweet home. I think is the saying. Is that right, Kells? Yep. Just say it back to me. Every Englishman has a castle that he should call home sweet home. Yeah, Is that she... right, Kel? Say it back to me. <laughs> Go on, then. No, I'm, you've got to say it. You're Kel's. Oh, yeah. Every Englishman has a castle that he should call home sweet home. Is that right, Kel? Say it back to me. Every Englishman <laughs> has a castle that he should call home sweet home. Is that right, Kel? Say it back to me. Every Englishman has a castle that he should call... Home sweet home. Is that right, Kells? Say it back to me. Every Englishman has a castle that he should call home sweet home. Is that right, Kells? Say it back to me. Every Englishman... <laughs> Fair play! <laughs> Fair play. We entered a time warp, like in that episode of Doctor Who, where they enter a time loop. Doctor Who? Huh? Uh, mm? What? <clears throat> so, uh, well, that certainly was, uh, was, was fun. My brother um, was going to live in a warehouse as was almost like a live-in security guard. That happens in, in London quite a bit. I'd like to live in a windmill. I'd like to live in a lighthouse. I meant a lighthouse. Oh. Shall we? So you can have my windmill. We- I'm not living there anymore. Oh, OK, cool. Thanks, man. Nice. Justin. Yes, boss. Sometimes I get um, tweets, emails, letters, all kinds of things, mm. asking how you look so darn sexy. Give yeah. us some of your fashion tips. Uh, fashion tips, I would say, I go to two shops. Am I allowed to say these shops on yeah, this podcast? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, okay. You have, to, okay. you have to name three. I have to name three. Okay, I go to All Saints. I go to Tacky Max, uh, TK Max, and I also go occasionally to River Island. And as a man approaching his forties. How do you manage to look like someone who's only 36? Uh, it's called um, j- um, makeup. Thank you very much indeed. Well, our former producer has, uh, is not here, so we've been bullying Scoins. Feel free to join us. Have a listen. Oh. Baby. I was going to give them a call. I'd send them, I'd send them a letter, but I don't know the address. Guys? 
Guys? Kels? <sighs> You're an idiot. I'd write to the... I'd send a letter to the people who live in the house I used to live in, but I don't know the yeah, address. Yes. Scoines? Huh? I'd send a letter to the people who live in the house I used to live in, mm. but I don't know the address. <laughs> I don't know their address. What, have they moved? <laughs> to th- they... They have moved into the house. Right. And I don't know the address. <laughs> Can you find it out? <laughs> How? I don't How? Know, have you got a postcode or something? Oh, I don't know it. Oh. <laughs> Could you... Uh... It's the address I grew up in. But I don't know where they live, so I can't write to them to ask them. <laughs> Is a plum. Yeah, he's a plum. What plum? I think you lived at 94 Scoins of Plum Street. Yeah. M U P P E T. Or or maybe um, I lived at um, 69 Scoins is a wet fish avenue um, in Plumsville. Uh, 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 postcode, the same one you said, that's M U P P E T. P-E-T. Do you want to do one, Scoins? <laughs> He doesn't know what we're saying. No, he thinks we're actually giving out his he's, home address he's and he's scared, <laughs> he's crying. I, um... Do another one, Kels, it's funny. Do another address for him that he lives in that's, that's rude about him. 18. <laughs> 18 going to the Muppet Street. What Scoins, town is that in? Scoinsville. What's the postcode for that? What's the postcode for that? P-L-U-M. Yeah, I've got one. Got one. Um, yeah, it's uh, again. It's number sixty nine, yep. and it's um, uh, Scoin Stinks Lane, <laughs> and uh, the town is in Milton Keynes, uh, and the postcode is um, um, che- uh, it spells Cheese Bell. <laughs> C H E. It's a lot too long for a postcode. Yeah. That's not going to work. Um, uh, a Muppet. He lives in Muppet again. He lives at number two. Um, it's hard to do when he's staring right at yeah, you. Yeah, I know. He can't hear you, don't worry. Number two. He doesn't get it. Idiot Lane. <laughs> <laughs> Yours are genuinely <laughs> brilliant. In Pooh Town. Do the postcode again. And the postcode. P L O P 5. Plop 5. <laughs> Did you enjoy that, Scoins? Ow. Ow. Ah. Dead on. Thanks. No, I didn't enjoy it. Why? Because I'm a baby. No, seriously, why didn't you enjoy it? <laughs> it's because I'm a baby. No, seriously, why didn't you enjoy it? It's because I'm a baby. <laughs> why didn't you enjoy it? I'm a baby. I'm a baby. Just stop being a baby. Stop being a baby and answer the question. Why didn't you enjoy it? I. I'm a baby. I can't see. I got tears on my glasses. <laughs> Really child- it's real, really childish. Yeah, I know, so wipe your glasses. Dealey, we had beef this week. Mm, we did. But your beef was lamb. That's weak beef. Mm. That's from the rear of the beef. Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to the, the, um, the main beef steak at the yeah. front near the jowls. It was beefy. Whichever way you look at it, it was Well, it beefy. was weak beef. Mm. Well... Let, should we listen? Yeah, I, it was strong beef. Fat doctors. Mm. Fat doctors and nurses. The front page of The Sun waits up Doc. Uh, fat medics ordered to slim by NHS chief. You and I, uh, well, we disagree quite strongly on this, don't mm. we? We do. Because I think that uh, you need to practice what you preach. If you're going to be going to your doctor and you've got weight issues, it doesn't really help your cause if sitting opposite you is an obese doctor. How can that possibly help you? Well, Where's the, the motivation? Well, no, the, no the, what you're doing there, Justin, is you're using your own insecurities... And your own weaknesses mm. and you're planting them on the person sat opposite you. If you say, I'm not going to give up smoking because my doctor's a smoker yeah. or I'm not going to um, eat healthier because my doctor's a fatty, um, well, that, that's, you're punishing yourself, mate, and you're using them as an excuse. But it doesn't inspire me and if we are being told, like we constantly are, that in this country we have major weight problems. As a nation, we are getting fatter and fatter. Uh, doctors, of course, they are meant to be healthy. I just don't think it sets the right example for them to be overweight. But then again, what do I know? Well, not a lot, mate, on this one, it turns <laughs> out. What have the people uh, on the street said? Well, um, I've been asking people this morning, Ian, um, do you care if your doctor is over 
overweight. Here's what people had to say. Um, yeah, I do a bit because it's quite contradictive when someone's actually bigger than you and they're telling you, you know, you've got to lose this weight. And although it's their advice, surely they should be following it too. <laughs> So as somebody said to you then, as your doctor said to you, you're overweight, and your doctor was actually overweight themselves? Yeah, that's happened to me once before, yeah, and it was, like, really awkward. It's a bit contradictive. Surely you should be setting a better example. Because Ian thinks back in the studio that, that I'm absolutely crazy for saying that doctors should be slim because it makes absolutely no difference. But, but from your story, clearly, for you losing weight, it didn't really give you the motivation if your doctor opposite you is... It's overweight themselves. Obviously, I don't think every doctor should be slim. If they could do their job, they could do it. But obviously, if their doctor specialises in, say, diet control, mm. and then they're bigger than you and they're not doing anything about it and they're, like, just sort of telling you to lose it, it feels quite contradictive. So, just lastly, the, the doctor that you saw, was that doctor a specialist in, in weight control then? Um, no, it wasn't a specialist, but she was... Um, she, like, dealt with people that were overweight, so she did know quite a bit about it. And she was overweight herself? Yeah, she was bigger than me, yeah. I should, yes. I think definitely should be slim, yeah, because it's not setting a good example, is it? I mean, people are going in there because they're overweight and that, and then the doctors are saying so. Yeah. What's the difference? What make a difference? Doesn't affect their diagnosis if they're not slim, does it? I don't think it's I don't, you don't think, think it sets the wrong example if they're overweight? No, why? Only if they tell somebody else the fuck. Not really, no. But it doesn't give the right perception to a large person because if your doctor's telling you to lose weight and he's big or they're big, then it sort of gives you a complex of well the doctor doesn't care, he seems to be mm. healthy, then why should I lose weight? Typical daily report. No, nope, not at all. No, no. The de- word no, on the street, boss. No, typical daily report. No. You spent more time with the person who agreed with you than the fella who disagreed with you, mate. That's biased reporting. No, I'll tell you why. i tell you why. Because she had a very interesting story no, to tell. because she agreed with you. No, but she had an interesting story to tell. That, In your you know, opinion, because no, it backed up your weak argument. You know, that, that, that was somebody, and I can say this if she's listening right now, um, she was overweight. She still is overweight. Now, if you're going to your doctor for inspiration and help, and that person sitting opposite you is bigger than you, how can that possibly help? No, because you're using your own weakness, no. your own insecurities, and you're projecting it on them, Justin. Not They're giving all. you sound medical... I don't care what their weakness is. I care what their medical knowledge is. If you said to me, you need to give up smoking, you're an absolute disgrace, and in the next sentence you then went outside and you lit up a cigarette yourself... What a well, sentence. OK, OK, but... But where, for me, where, for me, where's the credibility? There is no credibility. If somebody's somebody's preaching to you... You are ignoring the fact, Dealey, that their medical advice is sound. It is sound. doesn't matter what mistakes they make in their life. doesn't matter how how weak-willed they are. doesn't matter how flawed they are as a human being. Their medical advice is sound. And you can't use their own personal flaws to justify your own weakness. Mm, So if their own medical advice is so sound and so accurate, why don't they follow that? themselves. I, I think it's a slap, bit of a cheek. I want to slap you today. No, I'm absolutely spot on. And you know what? You, you will hear from many people this morning that unfortunately have had weight issues, and if they go and see a specialist and that person is bigger than them, I'm sorry, but but you're not going to take anything from that. And he wasn't the only one I had weak beef with this week. Beef. Here's Pat in Houghton Regis arguing with me about legal aid going to the killers of Lee Rigby. Well, that 200000 could be better spent, couldn't it? On what? towards a referendum that this country's long been waiting for on capital punishment. Well, uh, uh, no, it couldn't be spent on that. Why couldn't it? Well, because y- you're naive if you think that they can just take £200,000 out of the legal aid pot and, and put it towards a referendum. It doesn't work like that. It's completely no, separate. No, you're just changing the sort of uh, tack on that. What I'm saying, no, I'm, what not, I'm, no not, I'm not changing the tack, the principle. Let's have the principle of this thing. If we had capital punishment in this country, mm. they wouldn't even be getting that legal aid. Well, no, well, no, they would have because they still would have had to have gone through the legal process, Pat. The legal process, it still, we wouldn't be paying for them on and on for the rest of their lives. No, no, no. You're, now you're now now you're going off on a different tack. You're talking about um, the cost of keeping them in prison. The two hundred thousand pounds was the cost of them going through the legal system Look, to get to legal- prison. This legal system is upside down and geared towards the criminal. We all know that. No, 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 we don't know that. Back on its head, and we had the money that 
these people are getting out of us that have co committed the crime. It's about time it was put into another pot where we could actually no, sort our Pat, legal and justice system out. Pat, that's, that's very naive because the money wouldn't be siphoned off into another pot. That, that, that money is, is for legal aid. No one has been prevented getting legal aid because of these gentlemen and no one is suffering unduly because of that money being paid uh, I I in legal aid. It's completely oh. separate. And also, oh. it proves... You, you, you're wrong as well when you say that the, the legal system favours the criminal. How on earth has the legal system favoured... These two gentlemen, they're going to be in prison for the rest of their lives. So we breathing. have won. But they're breathing. How have we won? You call them gentlemen as well, Ian. I don't know how you're going to call them. They're not gentlemen. But, you, but you're saying that the legal system has let us down. In, in, what way has it, in what way has it let us down in this case, where two fellas uh, have been found guilty of a crime they committed and they're sentenced to prison pretty much for the rest of their lives? How has that let us down? Well, the government have let us down by not having a no, 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 referendum. No, 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 not the budget. government. Pat, and let, no, Pat, let a very, us down Pat, because they're alive. Pat, a very specific question. How has the legal system let us down in this case? They let us down because they're breathing, these two people. These two people are breathing because of what they've done. It's wrong. Do you know how much a, a, a referendum would cost? Well, we had a referendum and proportionality when this last government come in, and that come out of the blue. How much, do you, how much would a referendum cost? I, I don't know the figures, but all I know is if you want the justice yeah. system to work in this country, no. give the people a voice. Yeah, how much, you, you, you said let's put £200,000 towards a referendum. Do you know how much the referendum on the changes to the parliamentary voting system cost about three years ago? No, you tell me. Have a guess. I well, I don't know. Three million? Four million? £75 million. Pounds. That £200,000 wouldn't even scrape the sides. Right. So they found £75 million pounds to change... Yeah. The, the parliamentary, whatever you're on about earlier, they can find another 75 million to satisfy those people in this country that want to see capital punishment back. But capital pun, right, right, right. You know that no one's going to introduce capital punishment because it would uh, it would be a complete vote loser. And what makes you so confident that the majority of people want capital punishment? Because that's why the, that's the government won't give that referendum because they know that the people in this country will vote. Well, for what it. makes you so confident that the, 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 the people would vote for it? Where do you get your well, figures from? Well, the figures are, when I talk to anybody about uh, what's happening in our country, no, you would get a, a negative response, wouldn't you? A negative response saying, no, I don't want capital punishment, I don't want... You ask your friends, you ask anyone yeah, well, you ask, about yeah, it. The, the thing is, Pat, we often uh, make friends of people who have similar views to us and, and, and have similar thoughts on stuff, so... You asking your friends, do you want capital punishment? The majority of them, I would imagine, would say yes. Me asking my friends, would they want capital punishment? The majority of them would say no. We, we surround right. ourselves with people who have similar viewpoints on, uh, to us. Let's put it to the test, then. Why can't we have it to the test? And then it'd be finally... If it's gone against where capital punishment can't come back, that's the end of the matter. But they won't put it to the test. But, 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 people, but, but people like you would be unhappy if you lost that test. I, I wouldn't know. If I'd lost that okay. test, it was the majority of you, I'd agree Capital with that. Capital punishment doesn't work. You know that, don't you, Pat, though? Before, you know, before I go, because well, I have got to go, it, it doesn't keep, work. Keeping people alive that have murdered people doesn't work either. Well, it does work. It punishes them for an extended period of time. Capital punishment does not reduce the number you of murders. Think, you don't know that. Well, I do it, know that. You've got it now. Well, Pat, I do know that. Let me just think. Are there any countries where they kill people who commit murders. Um, oh, yeah, America. And do they have st still have murders there? Oh, yeah, they have loads of murders there. The murder figures are on the increase in states where they have capital punishment. Pat, it doesn't right. work as a deterrent. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to disagree with that. OK, you, no, Pat, you disagree with facts and statistics as much as you want, fella. And they're not the only people I had beef with this week. Beef, it doesn't even say beef the second time, and I can't stop saying it. Here's Lynn from Hemel. Good morning, Ian. What do you want to say? Well, at the risk of you belittling me, um, I do agree with what you said. Yes, it's wonderful that we live in a fabulous country and you can put through an appeal and it gets paid for. But in this case, it was a public execution. Did you, see, was... did you see it? No, I didn't see it. OK, I how do you know? I... Because it was reported by the BBC. Yeah, but we didn't see it. We didn't see it. But many people did, didn't they? I don't know. I've not spoken to those people. Well, we yeah, know... I know. 
You're doing exactly what I said you're going to do. You no. won't listen to me. You're just going to belittle me no. and make me look stupid. No, Lynn, I'm not belittling. It's interesting that you think when someone offers an argument that, that, that it's belittling. Not in the slightest. Uh, but I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. What I saw was a young black lad with blood on his hands carrying a, a butcher's knife. That's what I saw. I don't know what happened before or after as I wasn't there. No, and I wasn't there, but no. the BBC, which I have a great deal of faith in, reported it, and there were women weren't there there that but had I... their reports where they tried to yeah. they tried to stop them and help them. Well, exactly, but, but what you're telling me at the moment is hearsay, because I don't know. Uh, and you, you can't sentence two people to uh, life imprisonment simply on hearsay or news reports. You can't bypass the legal system. There were people that saw it happen. Just because what? I didn't and you didn't doesn't make witnesses. it any less real, does it? There were, there were witnesses there. Exactly. Exactly, but, the, they, but they still have to go through the legal process to, to be found guilty. You can't just say, oh, there were loads of people there that saw it and filmed it on well, their mobile. Well, didn't they go through the legal process and be found guilty? Well, yeah, that, and that's where the £200,000 has gone. And what I don't understand is, I say I agree with you in some part, but they were witnessed doing it. Apparently. And I think, what do you mean apparently? There were several witnesses. Well, I don't, I've, not, I've not studied the case in great detail. As I say, my news comes from the BBC. Uh, so the BBC. But you, you should question. They're liars, are they? No, not at all. But you, do you not question? I question all the news I read and hear. I don't question something. Oh, I do. That's, I don't question something that's reported by the BBC. I would. That wouldn't. Wouldn't. Well, you might do. That's. You're very. You're very. Um, Argumentative. No, you no, no, not at all. Everything. No, I do question everything. And you say that as though that's a bad thing, Lynn. I question everything. Of course, I question what I read in the newspapers. I question what I see on the news. I question what I hear. I question what I hear Simon saying in the news here. Because I'm it's, not it... saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that I can't. I don't understand your attitude on this. To be honest. Well, the attitude is that they, they had £200,000 legal aid, OK, to, to go through court. You, you appreciate they had to go through the legal process to be yeah, sentenced. I'm not, no, I understand that. And then where's, then where's your beef? My, my thought was that they were now questioning it yeah, and they're appealing. appealing. They're appealing. And I thought that's what the money was going on. No, no. So how... There'll be more money spent on the appeal. Why would they appeal something? Because they're, so, they're in prison for the rest of their lives and they are going to be well bored. So they, they might as well. And, and the beauty, again, of the legal system is if you disagree with a judge's decision, you're allowed to question it. And that's great. And yeah, we can't I, exclude I them. That. We can't exclude them. We can't be but selective. It was, it was a public execution. OK, but they are questioning the length of their sentences. Which they are, uh, Lynn, we're going around in circles, but they are legally allowed to do that. We can't say, ah, we don't like them, so we're not going to let them question it. We, we, but these ones we're not so, so disappointed with. And they're not the only people I had weak beef with this week beef. Actually, it was. Unless I have weak beef with someone on Friday this week beef, which is likely beef. Paul Scoynes has saved this desperate, dying carcass of a show. <laughs> Anyone spot the deliberate mistake there, Kels? If it's a carcass, it's dead. Oh. By coming up with a great new catchphrase, Paul? If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. When I say came up with a catchphrase, you stole it from an old woman. An old Cliff Richard fan. Shh. Let's dip back into the radio show so you can hear it's all unfolding. Sorry. All unfolding. Thanks. This new slogan for the show. (laughs) Paul, remind us what it is. If you hear a whisper... Give us a shout. Uh, oh. You're not so keen on it, mate. Uh, yes. A little bit dismissive. I wasn't at first, but I think it's... Well, Paul puts forward a great argument. Paul, put your argument forward for it. Well, this all came from our uh, programme last week, Ian, where we spoke to the lady from the Cliff Richard fan club. Yep. And she was saying that the motto of their uh, newsletter is, if you hear a whisper, brackets, about Cliff Richard, give us a shout. Now, we're not being so selective, <laughs> are we're we? We're not being so selective. This doesn't exclusively uh, link to Cliff Richard. I mean, In fact, some of the whispers about Cliffy, probably best that you don't shout. Yes, you yes. don't shout about that. But if the, 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 the theory behind this is, if you hear a little whisper about anything going on, little story, mm. 
give us a shout. Justin, so, I thought this would be up your street. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, today, I am smart for harps. Um, I'm going to be later on live in Harpenden in my uh, new smart outfit today. I'll take this one to the streets. Yeah. I'll uh, get reaction. And maybe I shall get people in their poshest voices in Harpenden, of course, which is very posh, um, to uh, say that slogan for us. Definitely get some slogan. Get them to say that. And we can put that in hotkeys. I think that'll be great. Local Excellent. and vocal. Local mm. voice is always great. Um, but what I, I think a nice little Vox package might be you going up to people and just saying, if what is it again, Paul? Sorry. <laughs> if you hear a whisper, give us a shout. And then just putting the microphone in their faces and, and, and just seeing what, what they, their response is. We yeah. might get some great local stories. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, maybe. We might get some great local stories, Justin. Mm, yeah. Cheers, boss. Yeah, thanks very much Bye. indeed. Excellent stuff indeed from uh, J Dog today. So, well, the, the motto of the show is if, uh, if you're shouting, you should be whispering. No, no. No? No. If you hear a whisper... Shout it. No. If you, if you hear a whisper, give us a shout. We've now dipped out of the radio show and we're back into the podcast link, so I can tell you that we're dipping back into the radio show for more bands on the radio. anymore, but when she did, boy oh boy did she use it. Nina Simone there and Ain't Got No. From the musical from which musical, from which musical, guys? Justin, this uh, one's... Hair? Yeah! Oh, it's well in done. there. I lo- I've told you my hair story about when I took my mum to see hair. Maybe I've not told you this, Paul. <clears throat> took my mum... I love hair. Hair is, is one of my favourite musicals. Is my only favourite. It's my favourite musical. And I've got the original British, the original American... The film soundtrack. I've got five different versions of the hair soundtrack. Yeah, Ooh. I love it. I love it that much. Right? I think it's genuinely think it's a masterpiece. Uh, and I took my mum to see hair maybe two years ago. Right now she's in a wheelchair. So when you're in a, uh, you, by the way, if you want to get cheap seats in the theatre, take someone in a wheelchair. The carer either goes free or half price, mm-hmm. and they're great seats. Good tip. Great, it's a good tip. Mm-hmm. So I took my mum to see hair. So she's in the wheelchair. I think I got free seat for that one for me because I was a carer. Anyway, so she's up in the balcony and she's right by the edge at the balcony. Okay, she's at the front of the balcony and by the aisle. Okay, mm-hmm. and of course there's a scene in hair where um, they strip off and they kind of wander out into the audience in the nuddy, right? Wow. And so I'm there with my mum and there's this naked fella. So you're my mum in a wheelchair, Paul, right? OK. <laughs> and there's this naked, let the sun shine in. He's walking around towards a lead and she's there, the balcony's in front of her. He puts his leg up on the balcony. Oh. Let the sun shine in. Let wow. everything is fl- oh. flapping around. Sheesh. Inches from my mum's face. How did she feel? She, uh, with both hands. No. <laughs> she, <laughs> she said to me uh, in the interval, I've not seen one of those for years. <laughs> 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 Absolutely terrible. Anyway, Justin. Yeah. We're not here to talk about oh, um, can't actors. Can't talk that, No, exactly. She tried. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, listen, we've got a new catchphrase for the show that Paul Scoynes has stolen from an elderly Cliff Richard fan. Uh, 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 Scoynes, remind us of this catchphrase, please. Keep Last... it brief. What? Just Paul. Yeah. Could be a long answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ian, last, last week we did a piece of... If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Is that it? Yeah. OK. Now, Justin, I think this is a cracking idea. Mm. Uh, you, you're not convinced, are you? No, I'm not convinced at all. I mean, obviously, James Whale, well, one of our BBC colleagues, he's got the only way as well, which is, you know, that's quite good. If you hear a whisper, <laughs> give us is, a shout. Hang on, Justin. What yeah. is that? that? That gets you nothing back. Yeah, but he's based in Essex. Yeah, but... Wh- so it's based on the only way is Essex, the only way is Whale. Well. It's simple but effective. This, they're two Ours, different things. You do... If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. So what I've done, I've um, I've taken this one to the streets. I'm looking forward the, to this the, so the slogan much. of our breakfast show. I've taken it to Harpenden, the home of our big tour, to get some feedback. I was smart for harps yesterday. <laughs> Here's what happened. Hey, Kieran, you well? Yeah. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. So I don't what? If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Oh, OK. Does it work? What? The whis... Oh, s- the slogan. Um, what's... Oh, whis... Yeah. So, what's the slogan again? Um, whisper. Give a... Oh, no. If you hear a whisper, yeah. give us a shout. All right. Say that again for us. Hear... If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Come on, put some passion into it, come on. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Yes! 
Morning, sir. If you um, if you hear a whisper, give us a shout. No, I can't hear anything. I'm not I'm not that sharp on the hearing actually. Okay. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Hello. Hey, Michael. How are you? Fine. Lovely hearing, by the way. Well, that's quite long, isn't it? Yeah. Michael, if you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Goodbye. Oh, but Michael, do you, you, don't, you don't know what it's about? I don't want to know either. No, no, it's a slogan to our breakfast show, Michael. Do you like it? No. Ma- oh. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Hey, Tim, you're, you're a keen Ian Lee fan, aren't you? I certainly am, yeah, certainly am. Good man. So, the new slogan, if you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Is that working for you? Slightly, slightly, only slightly. Oh. Yeah. How can we up our game, then? If you hear it, cheer it. If you hear it, cheer it. Cheer it. it. What about that? Really? Yeah, I think that's the one. I don't have a clue what you're going on about, mate. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. You've lost me. It's the... um, Sorry, I thought word had got out about this already. I'm not from around around this area. Where do you live? Uh, Stevenage. Oh, right, you're still local and vocal. (laughs) What are you on about? If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. No, I can't hear. I must be going deaf or something. No, no, no. About what? what? About anything happening locally. Oh, really? Oh, it's, right. um, it's the slogan to our breakfast show. All oh, right. You, you don't seem What's to be... What's your name? My name's Justin. Oh, Justin. Oh, yes, yeah. I've heard you on the radio, Justin. <laughs> so, as a listener, this slogan, if you hear a whisper, give us a shout, would that get you to phone the radio station about local stories? You know, if I knew any local stories, but I'm yeah. very old and people don't yeah. tell me whispers. I've got to be honest with you, the, 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 this slogan's not working on you, is it? It's not, no. I will give you a ring, though, Justin. Yeah? You look very handsome and Thank you. Smart and... <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised that you, you don't pick out the women. And yeah. The fellas are not, not unless you're a little bit like that. So well, you're not like yes. that. Yes, let's, let's not go there, Harry. <laughs> okay. OK, lovely to meet you, sir. Take okay. care. And you. Cheers. Yeah, take care. Interesting uh, twist at the end there. Mm. Uh, so, basically, people weren't really digging it. Uh, no, they weren't. Um, no. I think, you know, when it comes to a slogan, as soon as you, you mention it to people, um, that they should know what you're talking about. And secondly, they should be able to repeat that slogan. <laughs> Sadly, when I took it to the streets, um, it didn't really work. Now we're back in the podcast, and you're just in time to hear me do some quiz show impressions. OK, guys. OK. Mm. <coughs> Anyone? Anyone in particular? Hey, hey! Jimmy Talbuck. Yes. Yes. That is spot on. Yeah, that's good. OK, another quiz show uh, impression. Oh, yeah, you got to see what you see. Eiffel Tower. What's Mr Chips up to now oh. in the film? Say what you see when Mr Chips... Wait, Roy Walker. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Thanks. It's good, uh, but it's not right. OK, let's... Oh, it's good, it's good <laughs> but it's not great. You're not good at the oh, Eiffel oh, Tower. Oh, oh, uh, pointless. No, that's you. Here's another one. Here's another one. We're playing catch up in the two zone. What am I? I'm round, I'm a fruit, and I'm orange. <laughs> is it an orange, Henry? Yes, it is, and I'm going for gold. Is it Henry somebody? Yeah. Henry Kelly. E- I know him with related. That's what? Related? Yeah. How are you related? This is my first name, Kelly. My oh. uh, friend's dad is Iranian. And he thought the lyrics to the Going for Gold theme were, the heme is on, the time is right. And he thought that each line was sung in a foreign language. <laughs> what does heme is on mean? I don't know. I don't speak foreign languages. Hey, Scoins, why don't you do a, a quiz show impression? <clears throat> um... Would you like to phone a friend? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to do it in a different voice. <laughs> Who would like to be a millionaire? I think you'll find it's called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Anyway, let's go back. <laughs> All right, guys, calm down. God, you could cut the tension with a knife. Don't get a knife out. No. Let's peer back into the radio box and see what's happening now. Look, it's Pitcher Phil. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Philip. Good morning. Um, this has got me a bit puzzled because this, this quiz show you're talking about, the only one I remember yeah. where there were odds yeah. was called the Sweet State Game in 1976 with Bernard Braden. And I know it's not that, is it? 
No, it's not that at all, you plum. No, that's what I thought. I've been back in my... Us, can you give me a clue? For... Just a tiny clue? No! Hang on. For those who don't know, Pitcher Phil knows every minute detail. Some would see every, say every dull, tiny yeah. detail about every television show yeah. ever made. All right, I'll do it again. Here we go. Right. Hang on, I've got to do yeah. the voice. Ho-ho! Right, OK. Yeah. Ho-ho! Well, so, we've got a difference of opinion. Well, I reckon, Ian, the only thing is, your your impersonation is, if it's who I think it is, it's perfect. Is it Ken Dodd? No, it's not Ken Dodd! Oh, well, Flippin' egg, Philip! Well, I mean, this, you've got me really stumped with this one. What about Winner Takes All with Jimmy Tarbuck? Oh, now, Philip, hang on a minute. Kyle? Oh, hi, Ian. Hello, Kyle, you're on the air. What, what show do you reckon it is? Well, well I, I think you've conflated two shows. Sorry? I think it's... I think it's winner takes all is is the game show. Yeah. But your your impression seems to be Henry Kelly. <laughs> You're playing catch up in the two zone. Yeah. I'm a fruit. I'm round. I'm an orange. What am I? <laughs> no, it's not impression of Henry Kelly. Uh. Is oh, it? No. I'm doing Jimmy Tarbox. Oh, yes. oh you are. Yeah, g- g- yeah. It was winner takes all, guys. Uh, did they- I don't. I remember it used to go out. I think it was from Yorkshire Television, if oh, I remember correctly. Heck. And it used to go out on a Friday night, I think about seven. O'clock. Sorry, Carl. You're never going to get another word in edgeways now. Phil speaking. Oh, I'm apo- I do apologise, Carl. Kyle. No, I, no, I, I was going to say he's a scouser. Jimmy Tarbuck. I was doing a yeah. Scouse accent, mate. Was it? He, he sounded Irish. <laughs> oh, we've got a difference of opinion. A five to one. It's Phil saying the odds on game. Yeah. And it's, it's even, it's Kyle saying when it takes all. Oh, Let's wonderful. find out who's right. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Kyle, you're spot on, mate. <laughs> but you're a little, all right. It, but but it, that is a bang on. All right, you do, Jimmy Tarbuck. Who, hey, me? Yeah, go on. Uh, oh, they do, though. Don't they, though? The Beatles. <laughs> Five to one. Uh, uh. Phil, you do a Jimmy Tarbuck. Oh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I can't do it. I remember Jimmy Tarbuck when he did London Sunday Night London Palladium when he first started. Here we go. Look at you trying to redeem yourself. There is egg on your face, Phil. I, I think, know, I, I know, think you I missed know. a bit. I, I, I told your uh, uh, co-producer, researcher, um, <laughs> and uh, I, I thought I was wrong. I, I oh, admit I'm wrong. You, you know, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect, it turns out. No. Phil, I, I just uh, tweeted, that, tweeted that you were coming on, and Scott has messaged me saying then, saying every now and then I seek out the video of Pitcher Phil singing Rocky Top on YouTube. Oh, I'd I, love, I do know what, Ian, I'd, I don't think it is on YouTube, is it? it well, it, it, the, the Scott seems to think it is. I'll tell you what <laughs> is on YouTube, it's me making a mistake. Oh, Pitcher, can I Can I say it? Yeah, sure, why not? Pitcher Phil must it up. Oh, really? Yeah, with you, with, uh, when I used to do the scores. Oh, yeah. And I make a mistake. Yeah. Well, you made a mistake today, Phil, oh. haven't you? And Kyle, thank you very much indeed. Welcome back to the podcast links. Yeah, we're doing it like this today. Let's peer back into our radio box and hear what we're talking about now. The Sun, Britain's biggest selling newspaper. The People's Paper, it describes itself, I see, really has gone off the rails recently. It really has been printing a complete and utter load of old guff on its front pages. Forget the inside pages. The front pages, they've, they've, they've kind of just, I would say, three, three rungs on the news ladder above the Daily Star. <laughs> so we've had the, um, the boy with the devil mark, which yep. was probably a burn from a hairdryer. Mm-hmm. What do we have yesterday? There was something ridiculous yesterday, wasn't there? Uh, well, we we managed to get quite a lot of mileage out of it. Ian, what was it? it was oh, Fat Doctors. Fat Doctors, yeah. Today, you couldn't make it cup. Uh? Couldn't make it cup. 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 Yeah. Front page of the Sun today, couldn't make it cup. NHS won't fix my odd boobs as I'm not a wannabe model. You couldn't make it cup, could you? No. A teenager with one breast, six cup sizes bigger than the other, has been refused a boobop on the NHS. Jasmine Andrews, 17, of Malden Essex, claims it's because she's not a wannabe model like Josie Cunningham. Tragic for this young lady. Very sorry to hear that. But you couldn't make it cup. That's that's a front page story that a woman's got one boob bigger than the other and she can't get it done on the NHS. We're all looking to Kelly as the only woman here. Help us out, Cal. I wonder what other slogan they could have used. Um, Let's have a think. OK, couldn't make it cup. Uh, um, boob. What, what a boob. OK, are we veering into taste and decency issues? I feel, I feel, feel we might. The breast around. What's your boob about? 
much about nothing. No. That's Shakespeare scoins. You can't you can't say that's um, tasteless and indecent. Shakespeare. He's Britain's finest. Yeah. 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 You can make it cup. Is the back? Are we out? We're, it's, it's getting a bit, a bit tiresome, yes, actually. It makes this perfect sense. Hello, everyone. This is the the podcast links right now. Yeah, they know. Yeah. Shall we dip back into here? What we're the all whole doing thing was funny twice, but I think it's Dennis. It's probably Dennis. It's always Dennis. You survived your uh, wedding anniversary. Naturally. I'm yes. assuming you had a little. Uh, yes, a little, a little of everything. A little, a little really. <laughs> Yes. One from the top, two from the bottom. Yeah, we're very good. We've got some bottles of uh, nice stuff. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of Bunky Bunky. Uh, well, not at my age. Good lad, good lad. <laughs> Shagnira giggling in the background. I know, she's laughing again. Well, you asked me yesterday why would I've been married so long. Yes. My advice is pick the right girl. And uh, um, you, you did, I'm assuming. Is that what well, you're saying? Yep, I did. And so the thing is, the thing is, Dennis, as men, you know this, we all like to pick the wrong girl, don't we? Hey, Well, hey? I picked a few before I found Wynn. Good lad, good lad, and well done. I tell you what, you know, you're on about smoking this morning. Yes. Smoking is a peer pressure thing to start with. No, it's not. Well, in, in very, very few people start smoking on their own. They go, it's peer pressure. So. I, don't bu- I don't buy this peer pressure why thing. Not? I don't buy this. I, do you know why I smoked? No. To annoy my girlfriend. Ah, well, that's peer pressure again. That's not, no, that's not peer pressure. Of course it is. No, of course it's not. It is. No, it's not peer it pressure. Is. Peer pressure yeah. is what happened in Eastbourne yesterday. Yeah. To shout out, Win. <laughs> <laughs> peer, 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 I've not been married for 65 years. I can say what I like. <laughs> peer pressure is when your mates go, here, go on, have a yeah. cheeky little s- snort on this, little smoke on this, because otherwise well, you're a scaredy cat. Well, the thing is, before I met Wynn, of course, when I was uh, on the pool, yeah. I never kissed a girl who smoked twice. Oh. It's like I'd rather put my head in a sewer than kiss a girl who's been smoking. Can I permission to speak freely? Certainly. I I think there's something quite... Can I say this? I think there's something quite sexy about kissing a girl who smoked a cigarette. Oh, yeah, God, there's, no. there's something wrong about it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I used to... I'd rather... Wait, yeah. will you keep your noise down, love? I'm talking to Dennis. Hello? He said shut up. <laughs> if she wants to come on, give her the phone. No, she started smoking, you see. Oh. That was peer pressure with friends. Yeah. And then she said to me, would I buy some cigarettes? I said, no, if you want cigarettes, go and buy the damn things yourself. Yeah. And she stopped. Yeah. Cigarettes are too expensive now, anyway. Well, no, it wasn't that. It was, as I said, I don't like kissing a girl who's been smoking. Okay. I'd rather put my head down a sewer. Can I speak to Wynne? When can you hear? What did they say? She's poor hearing at the moment. Pardon? Can he speak to you, he said. Yes, you can hear. You can, she can hear Hear you. No, I can't. Yes, I can. <laughs> of course I can, you silly old sausage. <laughs> How do you put up with Dennis for so long, Win? What did he say? How have you put up with me for so long? Uh, uh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it, Dennis. Thank you very much. Here's what happened on Friday's show. Now, let's get this face on. Paul, could you... Um, who's the gentleman who's been sending those tweets? Let's read some of those tweets. What's, his, what's the fellow's name? I don't want to name him. Uh, OK, well, can you, can you send... Can you... Send me those tweets. Send you the tweets. <clears throat> yeah. I will, listen. The astute amongst you will have noticed there has been a slight change, very minor, borderline insignificant change that has taken place uh, to the show recently. We used to have uh, a female producer whose uh, name was uh, Catherine Boyle. She is no longer on the show. She's currently not on the show. Paul Scoynes is the current producer of the show. Now, lots of you have been sending us abuse and emails. Let me explain exactly what happened. Uh, Catherine uh, broke two... two uh, sorry, Catherine broke the rules of broadcasting twice. She did it twice. Uh, she made... Um, and I've been given permission by the boss to say this. She made uh, an inappropriate reference to semen. Yes, please. I think we can actually play the clip. If we dig the clip out, I think we should be able to play that. She made an inappropriate reference to Philip Seaman Hoffman, the actor. Uh, And she also... um, Well, she also said something else which I can't allude to because that is just too rude. Now, once is fine, twice really is. Poor, poor show. So... With immediate effect, Catherine was removed from this show. Um, She is undergoing uh, not only a works tribunal, but there is uh, an investigation. Once a complaint 
the way radio works, once a complaint is launched by the listener, and if that listener then decides to make that complaint legal, then it has to go through the British legal system. So, Catherine Boyle is not producing the show. Paul Scoynes is producing the show. I think he's doing a cracking job. He's settling into it very, very nicely. Let's, uh, let's make this an end of the abuse, shall we? I've sent you the, uh, the, the tweets, in let's, on your email. Uh, let's yeah. have a little look yeah. from uh, some of the tweets that Paul's been getting. Lena says, I've got to say, Paul Scoynes is doing a great job producing Ian Lee's <clears> show. I can't remember that woman. Cindy, what was it? Neil says, how can you say that, pa- how can you say that? Paul's voice is so... A little bit of punctuation, Neil. How can you say that? Paul's voice is so dour. Dour? And boring, with no sense of fun or humour. Unlike Catherine, get her back, please. Oh, Catherine, says Lino, that was it. Bit cheeky, she's still using 3CR Kate in her Twitter name. Neil says, it's supposed to be a breakfast show to wake up, not send them back to sleep. Show some enthusiasm, it's dull. Uh, And Neil finally says, the banter is okay, but you just start enjoying it. Then in comes the dour, dour, boring voice of Paul and kills it stone dead, no funny meal. Right, we've answered the questions. Don't know what he's talking about. Oh, mate. We've answered the questions. Let's get on with it. Let's enjoy it. Let's have a great future, guys. Let's win some more awards. Let's do some great radio. And remember, this did happen. Oh, this thing about um, Philip Seymour Seymour (laughs) Hoffman. You've just got to be so, so careful when you're working in radio. I think we should... This clip should be sent to all of the local colleges that teach radio, uh, and people should uh, certainly pay attention. Never make a mistake like this. Oh, this thing about um, Philip Seymour Seymour (laughs) Hoffman. Hope that answers your questions. Let's go to Mark in Bletchley. Morning, Mark. Good morning, Ian. Mark, what you got for us? I'd just like to say thank you uh, to you and your production team for explaining... um, uh, Catherine uh, Boyle's situation. I think it's pretty sad, really, uh, this day and age. I know uh, you've got rules and regulations, but uh, I did listen to the podcast. I had to listen to it twice to try and pick up, because I've, I've heard worse. But uh, Well, and well I'm, like and I'm sure say... that those people, were, 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 when we're kind of straying in le- into legal territory, I'm sure the situations where you've heard worse, um, uh, those people lost their jobs. Well, I, th- I thought it was a joke, and I, th- I, I, no. I couldn't believe it. No. And, uh, you know, I've followed Catherine since the gardening phone-in show. And, yeah, uh, she's I've had a long, a long, in inverted commas, career, and it's just a shame that, you know, a slip of the tongue muffed it up for her. And it's a lesson I'll... to everyone, isn't it, really? It is. I would still support, as I say, I'm a pretty, you probably know me, I'm a pretty loyal listener to a lot of radio stations. Ra- ra- local radio is my life at the moment. And uh, I, I don't like to see people having bad times. You no. know, people behind the scenes, people that work behind thank producers yeah. and radio engineers and everything. So I just thanks for, for you know for putting that out anyway because I, I couldn't I couldn't see the faults. No. I couldn't see it, and I'm, I'm not the, I'm not the brightest penny in the pack sometimes. And I no, I, know. I thought I can't see it, but uh, anyway, uh, obviously thanks to the management for uh, for letting you. Um, sort of talk about it and I suppose we'll just move on and wish Catherine Boyle um, uh, all... 08459 four double five five double five is the telephone number Mark thank you very much indeed uh, I appreciate your continued support and uh, we wish you know well I guess we wish that Catherine learns her lesson does someone want to say bye <coughs> anyone um, Squines Steely no. see you guys see you next week he's such a pro Thanks for listening to this free download from BBC Three Counties Radio, your local radio station for beds, hearts and bucks, on FM, AM, digital radio and online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. 